A very good evening to you and welcome to KTN Prime. My name is James Smart. Good evening and welcome once again. First, the highlights. Commissioner Hamid Nasser, uh, I've had difficult relations with him in the last uh, several months. Spilling the beans, Gladys Shulei now points an accusing finger at three JC commissioners. <laughs> Governments move to forestall a referendum is slammed as new poll backs the governors. And abortion in marriage, new report details shocking revelations. Still in this bulletin, Mombasa at standstill as pawn kings and queens are stopped on their tracks. Good evening and welcome. I'm James Smart. Now, suspended Chief Registrar of the Judiciary, Gladys Postule, has accused two commissioners of the Judicial Service Commission and a Court of Appeal judge of impropriety. Shalei, who appeared before the Parliamentary Committee on Justice and Legal Affairs, spoke of how the commissioners and the judge had sought favors bordering on abuse of office. Shalei, who declined to give any information in camera, defended herself over accusations of financial impropriety. Two days after she was sent on compulsory leave by the Judicial Service Commission over allegations of financial impropriety, Gladys Shelley got her chance before the Parliamentary Committee on Justice and Legal Affairs to give her side of the story. I have nothing to hide. I do not wish to say anything in camera. I prefer to speak in public. I have never been a coward in my life and I will not begin now. The committee sought clarification of reports that Gladys Shelley bent some procurement rules. I still up to this day do not know what charges or what case exists against me. A purported purchase uh, of a house or a plot in Mombasa in which you are directly involved. The judiciary has not purchased any property in Mombasa yet. She told the committee that the refurbishment of the Minimani law courts was in fact done by the contractors at no extra cost to the judiciary and the only money spent was on connectivity. The issue of the network in Minimani, uh, I know it's been indicated in the media that a billion shillings was spent. The price, the amount that was spent is 230 million. On the relocation of the Court of Appeal to Elgon Court building. When the rumor started, uh, JSC said stop. Uh, the process on acquisition of Elgon Place. But when I came and explained all the details, they then said, we agree, it's a good decision, proceed. Then it was time to spill the beans. I mean, I see, do you, can you clearly tell this committee whether you have a problem with that, that commissioner? Yes. Uh, I did mention to him as chair of the finance committee that I didn't realize that uh, the building was you that you uh, the LSK told you about the bill this building you didn't tell me about it then he said oh forget about that one then there is court of appeal judge justice Mohammed Warsame Commissioner Warsame has constantly taunted me about hiring people and uh, in fact one time he told me we are to Jakula Matunda Uhuria Kaziako you've never hired anybody for me Mrs. Ocheng used to hire 30 people for me whenever I wanted and chief magistrate Emily Ominde Commissioner Minde, right from day one that I joined the judiciary, has fought me. There was even a time that I had to write a letter to her, copied it to the Chief Justice, and told the Chief Justice, can you explain to Commissioner Minde my role vis-a-vis -vis her role? Sholei questioned the JSC decision to conduct the investigation itself, saying the probe should have been carried out by another body. I'm caught in a situation where the JSC is the accuser, it's the prosecutor, and it's the investigator, and then it's the judge. The Committee on Justice and Legal Affairs had summoned the JSC to appear before it on Thursday. They are extremely very serious, damaging allegations that have been made against some members of the Judicial Service Commission. So it, it is in their interest to appear. The JSC has written to the committee asking for more time before it can give its side of the story. Rita Tinina, KTN. Well, governors have rejected the state's overtures to forestall a referendum, saying they will push on with the crusade to entrench 
40% county funds in the constitution. This uh, survey by InfoTrackeries indicates growing public support for the governor's push for more funds for devolution. A day after government's effort to forestall a referendum whipping its senators into dropping the crusade, governors are now taking the driver's seat. The governors say despite government's commitment to increase the county funding to 40% progressively, the percentage allocation should be embedded in law to avert mere lip service. I understand they have said that they are going to put 40% next year. Uh, let, then let's, that's okay. Let's now put it in law. If we put it in law because they have agreed it is correct, what we are saying is correct, then let's now put it in law. We don't want to haggle next year as a kelele push and pull. The governors are to convene a meeting to all county representatives onto the referendum drive. Ruto saying their push is to embolden devolution and not politics. At the same time, urging Jubilee senators who bailed out to rejoin their code counterparts. Wamesema tu, sababu code wameingia, lakini ili agenda yao ni muzuri. Sasa tutafanya nini yao watu wa code waondoke Kenya hii? So hapa hata tukilete mwaka uja, badu watakuwa hapa. And we have not made any agreements with the court, but court uh, can support us where they are. We are also asking Jubilee to support us on this. The government committed itself Tuesday to increasing funding to the counties according to the Jubilee Manifesto. The state has disbursed 210 billion shillings, an equivalent of 32.5% of the national budget to the counties. Jubilee senators were tasked to their counterparts to abandon the quest. The senators here will engage their colleagues so that we can better serve the nation. Consultations, discussions will be done at that level because even the governors are not politically neutral. But court senators have blasted their Jubilee colleagues, claiming they are victims of the executive's arm twisting to defeat a noble cause of insulating devolution. If you look at uh, the demeanor of our colleagues from the Senate uh, who are addressed to you a day or two ago, you can see clearly these are uh, captives. These are uh, senators who have been intimidated. Sisi wa Kenya tutaki kuongozwa kwa maneno ya mdomo inayotolewa barabarani au kwa wakati wa siasa. Tunataka hii ingie katika katiba ili siwe ni uamuzi wa mtu mmoja. Manuel a survey commissioned by the Center for Multi-Party Democracy CMD and conducted by InfoTrack Harris has projected that 47% of Kenyans want county budgets scaled up to over 50% of the national budget. 32% say at least 15% and peculiarly 6% of those polled want the amount reduced to below 10%. 53% say 210 billion shillings is not sufficient for county operations while 31% approve the allocation. 56% of Kenyans say the government is committed to devolution, while 35% disapprove the notion. The poll that sampled 1,500 respondents indicate that 56% view the Senate as the upper house, while 31% hold the National Assembly is the upper house. Samogina Ketian, Nairobi. The PQ in association with Nguvu Cement. Tony, that's where we are. So we know that senators at the Jubilee Coalition have abandoned their quest to that referendum. Uh, on a big question, I ask you, do you think the executive is intimidating senators over the push for referendum? Do you think the executive is intimidating senators over the push for referendum? You can text me on number 8040, or you can tweet me at James Smart and also at KT in Kenya. And I'll be able to give you that poll results at the end of this live bulletin and also give you that feedback during this live newscast. Choose Nguvu for undoubted strength. For now to our worrying statistics and 64% of married women have aborted a pregnancy at least once in their lifetime. A report released today also indicates cases of abortions rose last year to over 460,000 cases. And as KTN's Angel Katusia reports, girls as young as 10 years old have also been reported to procure abortions. She was only in 
class eight when she got pregnant. Then she did not even think of keeping the baby whose father was thrice her age and disappeared immediately after she informed him of the pregnancy. And so she opted for an abortion. Crotchet, kitu kama straw, niko na nini, haka ni msat, ndani. Sindi waka nidunga, na umu ingina likuwa naendelea kupampu. Kitu nini, alikuwa meka nga mazi ya kiendelea kunifanya hivu. Unajua sayo da mingi natoka. Kika ambia nga tu mungu, ansa me. Sa ni kuangata na wasuwasa kuna vinyaneza pata mtoto. Her situation represents that of hundreds of women who have aborted under unsafe circumstances. A report by the Ministry of Health in partnership with African Population and Health Research Center attributed unwanted pregnancies to the rising number of abortions. This largely due to lack of access to contraceptives by women or even misconceptions about contraceptives. Kenya, unsafe abortion has been recognized as a leading cause of maternal morbidity and mortality. According to the report, an estimated 464,690 abortions occurred in 2012 alone, this translating to 48 women per 1,000. Out of 2,631 women interviewed, 64% of them who are in marriage had aborted at one point. This was attributed to failure to use contraceptives. According to the 2012 report, cases of abortion are also high among girls aged between 10 and 19, and this group had more cases of severe complications of abortion. Rift Valley and Nyanza regions recorded high numbers of abortion, 64 abortions per 1,000 and 63 abortions per 1,000 respectively. The report recommends intensive education to help curb cases of unwanted pregnancies which often translate to induced abortions. Angel Katusa, KTN Prime. Police in Mombasa have impounded pornographic videos in a raid of movie stores in the town and as Ferdinand Omondi reports, there appears to be a growing appetite in the coastal town for pornography involving humans and animals. The morning raid in Mwembe Tayari targeted stores that stock movie collections. At first glance, they appear to be the usual Hollywood blockbusters, but in between the box office hits are another form of box office, pornography made in Kenya. It has been an ongoing operation targeting known porn distributors countrywide. The other day you saw ladies with the dogs at Nyali, strippers at Mutwapa, and all that indecency is going on within Mombasa region and the coast as well. And indeed, some of the alleged incidents have been caught on tape and are for sale in a worryingly growing industry. Aroma. This particular video stars a woman who calls herself Shiko, about to get down to business with a dreadlocked man described as a common figure in Kenyan porn. The video also has orgy scenes, complete with the several actors speaking a distinct local language. Another movie believed to have been shot at a restaurant in Mtuapa has a collection of strippers dancing to the tune of coastal songs before taking all their clothes off in erotic dancing. The stores have also increased supply of imported porn videos involving women having sex with dogs, perhaps to feed the people's curiosity following the recent rise of news reports of bestiality cases in the country. The raid also revealed a new niche for the pirates, groundbreaking investigative stories by KTN journalists. Mohammed Ali's popular Jicho Pevu and Jaramandi Lauhalifu series are now available in a growing infringement trend of the copyright law. 
Kenya has been rocked this year with shocking details of pornography and indecent sexual acts ranging from the alleged porn shoot in the Lash Nyali area of Mombasa to the bestiality cases that have shaken central Kenya to the core. Ferdinand Mundi, KTN, Mombasa. All right, an administration police officer at Susua AP Post murdered his two sons as his wife and two other children escaped and hurt. Joseph Mutai dozed his bomet timber house with paraffin after quarreling with his wife following a drinking spree. The suspect is admitted in hospital after getting a thorough beating from members of the public. Najma Ismail has that report. These are the remains of what used to be Joseph Mutai's home. The 34-year-old is said to have arrived home from a drinking spree and picked a fight with his wife. Things got worse as the AP later tried to push her into the fireplace. However, she managed to escape with her two daughters. Angered by this, the officer doused the house with paraffin and locked his two sons aged between four and nine years and left them to burn to death. The officer was caught and um, he was given uh, a thorough beating by the area resident. And, and as, we, as I talked to you, and the officer is hospitalized, hospitalized at uh, Tenwek uh, Mission Hospital. Uyo mutu historia yake kamili ni mutu tumechua wa mekua wakikabiliana na ambisoso kwa muta mwingi. The AP is currently admitted at the Tenwek Mission Hospital and police say he will be charged with murder as soon as he is discharged. Najma Ismail, KTN Prime. Business today in association with Safaricom Business. Get a Lipa na Mpesa till for your business today. To sign up, SMS Lipa to 21366. Alright, welcome back now. Time now for your new business brief. Now, Kenya risks losing its place as the ICT hub if the government does not extend the tax holiday that began in 2009. Speaking during a media briefing today, phone manufacturers said ICT is one of the key accelerators of the economy, sparring innovation that has seen the country birth more startups than Nigeria, Ghana, Egypt, Uganda, and Tanzania, which has gone a long way to reducing unemployment, now, especially for the youth. The tax exemption, which waived the 16% VAT on ICT, also reduced the cost of devices, which had the double effect of making more advanced technologies available at a cheaper cost, while also reducing counterfeit trade by providing all sectors of the market with affordable and original handsets. The player said the resumption of the 16% VAT will make the market vulnerable to counterfeits and also encourage the importation of mobile devices that are brought into the country through back routes. Moreover, the resumption of the tax will greatly disadvantage those living in rural areas who are still lagging further behind than those in the urban areas. Now, all this will slow the economy at the national broadband strategy and impact on the Vision 2030 economic blueprint. Over, uh, over uh, the re uh, regional competitors, uh, other innovation hubs, and we want to attract investments from large companies, like what has happened. So, so I'm not sure if everyone has realized, but, but m much of the multinationals have set up their base in Kenya over the past few years. All right, now the Ministry of Agriculture has put out a tender for the supply of fertilizers for the upcoming planting season. This comes as the ministry seeks to avoid being, quote, flat-footed, as has been the case in numerous planting seasons, and ensure maximum yield. Now, this gone out for the diamond phosphate, commonly referred to as DAP, calcium, ammonium, nitrate, or scan and urea, and the short rains are expected to commence at the end of September with a harvest planned for late February. Farmers have in the past complained of poor disbursement of fertilizer, which affects the quantity and quality of maize. In April, the government disbursed an emergency fund of 3 billion shillings to import subsidized fertilizer, but was slow to arrive to most farmers. Farmers decided either to purchase the fertilizer at exorbitant prices or plant without any and continue to count losses from poor planning from the government. The government promised to deliver imported subsidy fertilizer through the National Cereal Board at 2,500 shillings per 50 kilogram bag of DAP. It is also to import calcium ammonium nitrate can for 
top dressing that will be supplied to farmers at 600 shillings. All right now, dairy farmers in Bungoma County are crying foul over the continued neglect of the Kitinda dairy plant that was once the pride of the county's farmers' cooperative. And as KTN's Joy Dorin Bear reports, the farmers now want the current county government to speed up the process of reviving the plant to enable the farmers reap benefits from the sector. In 2012, Kitinda Farmers Cooperative Dairy Plant in Bungoma County received 116 million shillings from the government for its revival. Yet several months later, there is nothing to show of these fans at the plant. The plant that stalled years back due to constant breakdown of machinery is the reason dairy production from Bungoma slumped. The plant that was brought uh, by, the, by the finish is now outdated. Previously, at its peak, Kitinda Dairy Plant produced 14,000 liters of milk a day, which has now dropped to a shameful 400 or less liters. The current status is that of constant power blackouts, failed and outdated sterilizers, coolers, packaging machines, and not one milk collecting van. The, the Kitinda owes the Kenya power uh, over 800,000. Katinda Dairy Farmers Cooperative Plant is one among a number of other neglected industries across the country that were economic boosters for small-scale farmers in Kenya. What is left of the plant is just manual processing of mala and yogurt on a very low scale with hardly any upgraded equipment. As county governments work towards delivering on their mandate, Bungoma residents hope to have the plant revived to encourage dairy farmers to once again benefit from their livelihoods as farmers. Joy Doreen Bira, KTN Business Today. All right, let's take a look at your financial market. players taking part uh, of the right ages. A team of senior coaches has been following the proceedings of the tournament with a view of selecting a team that will represent the country in the Pan-African Copa Coca-Cola finals in South Africa. Now players who spoke to KTN on the third day of the finals at the Hope Center believe they have what it takes to go all the way and leave a mark in South Africa in their quest to attract international scouts. Nyanza's Kisumu Queens became the first team to book a semi-final bath in the ongoing Copacola of Under-15 National Championships after beating Muranda Girls 2-1 in the girls' version of Mashimeji Dabi. Muranda will join Kisumu in the semi-final from Group B. However, they have to navigate through Marago Queens as expected while Kisumu will tackle Kapsawar Girls in what will be a dead rubber match. But in the midst of these players trying to impress the scouts here with their tiki taka football, Kenya, just like any other team in Africa, have been grappling with edge cheating. Kuna malaktari wako verify proper edge, wanakucheki MRI kila kitu alafu inafanyika dental, wanaangalia, wana make sure uko kwa proper edge. Kuangalia technique sana ya mchezaji. Mchezaji ambao kwamba tunaangalia akiwa na mpira na vile hana mpira. Tunajaribu kuangalia pia vision yake sana mtu. Michael Shidangumbao is one of the lucky players who believes that proper nurturing will fulfill his dreams of joining the likes of Victor Nyama in the professional football. Yenye amenifurahisha mimi ni venye twacheza, tuelewana uwanjani na kila mmoja yuaminiana. Zina against zingine tukienda watu wengi faida yote. Lakini tulikuja kwa Cock, kuna watu wengi wanapenda kuja kwa Cock sababu Cock imesaidia watu wengi sana kuliko wengine. Kenya hopes that the team that will be selected for the championships in South Africa will be competitive enough to form the foundation of edge bracket teams that will eventually graduate to the national team Arambe Stars.
For getting sports today, I'm Hassan Juma. And controversy surrounding the Kenya Premier League derby between Gor Mahi and FC Leopards deepened after the Sports Stadium Management Board disowned an agreement purported to have been reached between them, FKF, KPL, and Gor Mahi. The stadium board insists that Gor Mahi is still banned from using their facilities, while KPL maintains the Sunday derby is owned as.